welcome back to my channel your physics and mathematics clinic in this video we are embarking on an exciting journey into the world of electricity we all know that electricity is all around us and it powers so much of our day lives but have you ever stopped to wonder what it actually is and how it works? Well, in this introductory video, we'll cover the fundamental principles of electricity and explore its origin. So the first question is, what is electricity? Well, in physics, we describe or define electricity as a form of energy that arises from the presence and movement of charged particles. Now, what are the types of electricity that exists? There are mainly two types of electricity. The first one is known as static electricity, which occurs due to the build-up of electrical charges on the surface of a material or a body. So uh, this build-up of electrons or charges on the surface of the material is usually caused by rubbing materials together. For example, if you rub a balloon against a wool sweater, Electrons are transferred from the wood to the balloon. This makes the balloon to be negatively charged and the wood to be positively charged. Which implies that uh, the body that loses electrons becomes positively charged and the one that gains electrons becomes negatively charged this is because the one that loses electrons will now have more protons which are positively charged than electrons and the one that gains electrons will have more negative charges as compared to the number of protons this will make the body to have an overall charge which is negative charge Objects with static electricity may attract or repel each other. Or the, 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 the built up electrons or charges can discharge suddenly. This might result in a spark or an electric shock. On a large scale, and a natural example of uh, this effect is that of lightning. How does lightning occur? It occurs due to the buildup of charges in clouds, which leads to a massive discharge of charges to the ground or between clouds themselves. And the second type of electricity is current electricity, which refers to the flow of electric charges through a conductor. These electric charges are usually electrons. We usually say electrons are charge carriers. So current electricity involves the movement of electrons in, an, in a conductor, unlike in static electricity where electrons are static or they don't move in static electricity but in current electricity electrons move through a conductor continuously okay and this effect is the one that powers most of our electrical devices 
for example, the electricity that is supplied to our homes for learning appliances like refrigerators, lights, and charging phones is current electricity. Now we've understood that both static electricity and current electricity depends on the behavior of an electric charge. You might wonder what a charge is. What is it? Well, an electric charge is a fundamental principle of, uh, I mean, a fundamental property of matter that makes matter to experience a force when placed in an electromagnetic field. We know that matter is made of atoms and atoms of electrons protons and neutrons inside them electrons are negatively charged and protons are positively charged while neutrons have no charge so if an object or a material is having an overall charge which might be positive or negative and then we place it in an electromagnetic field which is either electric field or magnetic field this object will experience a force this force we will discuss it in the next video when we start looking at forces between charged objects now what are some properties of charges what are some properties of charges there are basically three properties of charges but that makes them to be special the first one is that charges exists only as a positive charge or a negative charge implying that there are only two types of charges a positive one and a negative one these charges might repel or attract each other so like charges will repel each other and unlike charges will attract each other you know that for this to happen there should be a force of repulsion or force of attraction we'll discuss this force in the next video which is described by Coulomb's law the next property of charge or the second property of charge which I've labeled also one there it must be two is the conservation of charges charges are conserved in an isolated system so the total charge in an isolated system is conserved what does that really mean it simply means that charges can be transferred from one object to another but the overall charge the net charge still remains the same and the third property of charges that makes them to be special is that they are quantized a charge is quantized what does that really mean it simply means that charges comes in discrete amounts typically in multiples of elementary charge the elementary charge is that of any electrons an electron which is 1.6 times 10 to the power negative 19 coulombs and this simply means that the si unit for coulomb is the si unit for a charge is the coulomb the si unit of charge is the 
كولوم in the next video we we'll discuss now the forces that exist between charged particles these forces are described by coulomb's law so please make sure to watch the next video and those that will follow if this is your first time watching my videos and you haven't subscribed well if you've enjoyed learning with me be sure to hit the subscribe button there and click the bell icon so that you never miss an update see you in the next video